to make sure that you don't have to go there. I feel the loving, merciful hand of the Lord in this place tonight. You know, there are some rewards for repentance. Repentance will bring a refreshing. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. There's nothing like just good old apostolic, true, just Holy Ghost repentance. Let me follow the Lord here for just a minute. Everybody here has probably blundered once, at least once. Anybody that hadn't raised your hand? Amen. Do you remember how it felt when you came to the altar and asked God, Lord, I just simply blew it. I'm a miserable, wretched, no good for nothing failure. I'm sorry. Help me, God. Have mercy on me, God. And then all of a sudden, he begins to rain down righteousness on your soul. You begin to feel a release. You begin to not weep tears of sorrow, but you begin to weep tears of rejoicing. And you begin to feel light. You just begin to pick in another human. Like you just feel so renewed and refreshed and, and, and vigor and, and vigilant. And you just feel refreshed. Yes, yes, yes. That's a reward of repentance. Yes, yes. Friend, it also brings restoration. I said it brings restoration also. The things that you lost in your sin. Yeah. Bible said he will restore. When, when, when Satan came to Job and, and took all the children away from him and took his, to everything that he had, friend, Job said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the end, Job was blessed to or thousand. He had double what he had in the beginning. But God restored unto him the things that the devil had taken away. And then it brings revival. Yeah, yeah. You get your mind off your own self and then begin to think about the lost world that's out there. See, the devil can just keep us making enough of mistakes ourselves and we're always having to, you know, look at our own problems and our own self and all that. We're not going to worry about the lost world that's out there. But if we can truly repent, amen, and he can refresh us and restore us, then he's going to bring down a revival. My God, I feel revival in this place tonight. God be tonight that, that people will repent of their sins. Send a message to devil, devil, I'm not coming to your house. I'm not going to play your game no more. I'm not going to be your little pawn no more. But I'm going to submit myself unto God. You don't have to go to that place. You don't have to be in misery. You don't have to be a pawn of Satan. You don't have to be in misery and walk in darkness. Amen. You can walk in the light. You can be victorious. Amen. You can feel that revival spirit. Amen. That refreshing spirit. Christ has made us free. We must keep reminding ourselves of that. There's no sin that is powerful enough to bind or shackle us.
because what Jesus Christ has done on Calvary, he has set us free. Yes. Only when we willingly submit, go ahead, devil, put the shackles on me. Come on. Go ahead, devil, make me. He, he can't really do you that way because you are blood bought. Then the angels of heaven are sitting on the portal just waiting for you to call upon them. And they're going to come and they're going to set you free. They're just waiting. Because of what Christ has done upon Calvary, friend, he has made us free. I'm telling you, you don't have to go to hell. God does not want you to go there. The price for your sins has already been paid. Come on, let's clap our hands to the Lord. Reminded of a little boy that had a little Tootsie Roll. Mama was cooking supper. Mama told him, You better not eat that for supper. So he put it back in his pocket. Ten minutes later, she reached over there and he was smelling at it. She said, I told you, you better not eat that Tootsie Roll for supper. He put it back in his pocket in a wrapper. Fifteen minutes later, he had it out and he was licking it. She looked and she said, I told you, you better not eat that for supper. He put it back in his pocket. Fifteen minutes later, she looked over there and he was gulping it down. Friend, if you dabble with sin long enough, if you smell it long enough, if you taste of it long enough, eventually, friend, you're going to partake of it. And what's so dangerous is this, is that we can dabble in sin for so long that eventually that sin will get a hold of us. And we'll begin to love it. We'll begin to make excuses for it. We'll begin to hide it. But oh, if we can just bring it out into the open and repent. And just tell devil, I've changed my mind. I don't want to go to your house. I don't want to play your game no more. I'm tired of smelling it or licking it. I'm tired of gambling in it. But I want to go to heaven. I want to be a child of God. Last but not least, I won't go to hell because I've had a better offer. Oh, I wish I could sing. Friend. Blame my wife. <laughs> the Bible tells us in John 14, 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you so. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that where I am, you may be also. Friend, there's an offer I cannot refuse to be with the Lord, a place that he has prepared for me. If he created the whole universe in seven days, in all of its wonders, can you imagine what heaven's going to be like? He's been spending 2,000 years preparing that place. Friend, I've had an offer I can't refuse. I've had an offer. Devil, you can take your hands, you can take your toys, you can take everything you've got, and you can get out of here. It's like comparing jewels with rocks and dirt and sewer. It don't compare it.